All right, Google Maps changed the rules about their platform and all over the world since July 16th, 2018, people have been experiencing broken maps, either on custom builds, templates, themes, wherever it may be. The reason being is we now need to have the API keys in an account that has enabled billing even if you won't be charged. Now, I won't spend a lot of time here. I wanna make it simple and easy. There is a page that describes how Google charges for the JavaScript API. This page is really weird and it doesn't make a lot of sense to most folks, but that's okay. I'm going to explain it simply. Ignore everything on this page and instead just check out the pricing calculator. The good news here is most of you are automatically going to fit within the unlimited free tier since all we're doing is embeds. This applies to the projects where the map just doesn't show up anymore and we get this warning that says our API key is unsigned. However, in the event that we did have an advanced project with advanced embeds, there may be a monthly cost. So I would encourage you to use this calculator if we had those things in place. But if it's just a simple map showing up on the website, don't worry about it. It's going to be free. All we need to do is get a credit card number on file with Google. So let's do that. First, sign out of Google and any Gmail system you might be using, clear cookies and the browser cache. Then follow this link and sign in to the Google Cloud Platform. If this is your first time here on the Cloud Platform, you're going to see this screen. Simply click on Add Billing Account. I will now fill out the information on Step 1, which is pretty straightforward. On Step 2, I'll make a decision for tax purposes whether I'm an individual or a business. More information is available in the info bubble here. Towards the bottom of the page, only automatic payments can be selected, and it is selected by default. And then here, I simply choose bank account or credit slash debit card. I'm now presented with this screen, and I don't need to really tinker with anything at all. I'm simply going to click on Get Started. And this is where it starts to get confusing. There's all this API stuff in here. Ignore all of this and simply head to this URL which will automatically bring up the Enable Google Maps Platform checkbox. I'm going to simply select Maps and click on Continue. And now I need to create a project. I'll select New Project, and there's some rules. I can only use letters, numbers, spaces, and hyphens, so I can't enter mywebsite.com. I would enter mywebsite-com. Then click on Next. Here is where I must associate the billing account. So I'll simply click on Set Account, and on the next page, the Google Maps platform will automatically enable seven APIs and create the key. I'll simply click on Next. And there we have it. I've now been granted an API key. Now, I would need to send this to my developers. This is what I'm asking for as your developer. I need this key. Simply copy it to the clipboard and fire it on over to me. Now, although I'm done with creating the API key, I still need to do a few more things. So I'm going to click on Done. Now I have a couple options here. I can simply give my developers access to this panel and then let them set up the options here under Secure Credentials. On this Secure Credentials page, there are some API restrictions and application restrictions that need to be entered. Simply put, I would need to enter the website URLs here. So here's how I'm going to do that. First, I need to give this a proper name, API key dash and my website domain. Now I need to create HTTP referrers. So under application restrictions here, I'll select HTTP referrers. And I literally do have to type in the proper URLs here. One way I could go about this is by entering the fully qualified URL, HTTP colon slash slash www.mywebsite.com. And then enter another one for HTTPS, since I need both regular and secure. Another way I could approach this is by using wildcards, and I could type in this using the star asterisk. If I do that, I'll make sure that variations to my domain will work. For example, www versus the non-www version of my domain. When I'm done, I'll have something that looks a bit like this. And only after I've entered all of the URLs through this field here, then should I click on Save. After I click Save, I'll be redirected back to this credential screen. And from here, I could head back into this API key and edit it again. All of this seems a bit complicated, 
but there is another way I could approach this. I could give my developer access and have them handle it for me. To do that, I'll need to head to the main navigation menu here. I'll select I am and admin. Now it's time to add the developer. I'll click on add. I'll add the developer's email, in this case, my email, which I've sent to you. And I'll select the role to be project owner. That way full access to all resources is granted. Now I'll click on save. Now that's pretty much a wrap. So if you're having me as your developer log in and manage your API, then we're set from here out. I'll take care of everything else. Now if you're using WordPress and you have one of our custom themes installed, head over to the configuration panel and locate the core functionality API keys pane here. And then drop in that API key. And presto, within a short amount of time, all of the front end maps will start working again. And that's pretty much a wrap. Now there are different themes other than WordPress, such as Magento and Joomla that are out there and all kinds of different various applications that might use this key in a different way. For our purposes, we simply want to make sure clients know how to create their API key account and add us as a developer into that system. The following links have been included in the email with this video. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to give us a call. We could also do this during a live screen session if you like to make sure everything is installed properly. And that's a wrap. Thanks for watching.